<laughs> yeah, you, you you probably wouldn't imagine the road that got me where I am. That's that's a very long story, obviously, but um, to give you an idea of the contrast um, from where I came from, where I am, uh, I was raised in an extremely um, conservative Christian family, uh, Protestant, in Bible Belt, Texas. Um, you know, my parents were Rush Limbaugh fans at the time. Um, I remember in junior high being a Rush Limbaugh fan, and just being like, oh yeah, Rush Limbaugh, oh yeah. <laughs> Tell them darn lefties. And, um, you know, being also very religious and just being saturated with the concept that you have to believe in Jesus or else you face eternal damnation. And, you know, coming to this, I mean, realization around 13 years old that um, I didn't know what was true, but I didn't want to go down that road. That, um, you know, and that's, that's a process we all have to come to at some point, you know, whether we're going to um, take the road that's given to us by our parents and the rest of the society or, or um, try to find our own. And uh, it took me a long time to, to get my head straight. I went, like a lot of kids, when they, they split from, the church in the United States because it's such an extreme indoctrination system that when it's um, when that's broken they lose all structure and that's what happened for me I pretty much just went crazy um, became a criminal you know I was shoplifting and I, you know I, it took me a, a really long time um, a number of years to to realize okay you know this moral structure that I was handed within the context of religion is, is bullshit, but there is something else. There is, you know, a new context that I need to, to frame the world under, um, because this isn't going to work, you know, just treating people like crap and being, a, um, basically a hoodlum isn't, isn't a, a path to, um, I don't know, a good life. Um, and I had a couple of experiences. I don't talk about those kinds of things on my YouTube channel, um, right now because I, um, because I'm trying to keep it focused on, on, on the topics at hand. Um, uh, but, you know, believe it or not, it was, it was, it was kind of an esoteric experience that, um, that shifted things. Um, and it's really hard to, you know, to try to explain one of those kind of things in, in a 30 second soundbite. But, um, exactly. You, you, you meet these people every once in a while out, you know, in your travels, or at least I have, Every once in a while, you meet somebody, and it's just tit for tat, they understand. Um, because once you've had that experience, when you've seen the universe as a, as a total unit and not as a bunch of separate individuals like we're taught, I mean, that's the, that's the root of, of the, the falsehood in our paradigm that we're given, is that, that everything is separate. Um, when you break through that, there's, there's a... a irreversible shift that happens in your awareness and when you when you experience that really there is no separation then if you're honest with yourself you have to re readjust your entire philosophy everything has to restructure and as a result um, you know everything slowly finds a new alignment it falls into a new structure that um, people who've had these kinds of experiences tend to gravitate towards very very similar Patterns. Obviously, not everybody is going to agree on every detail because we're all in different stages of, you know, evaluating reality. We haven't all gone through the same process yet. But if people are, when people are dedicated to finding the truth rather than sticking to that belief system that they were given, um, I do believe that eventually we come to, we come closer and closer and closer and closer to um, a, an agreed view of things because that's that's the natural flow when when you're when you're honestly seeking the truth well and I, I do think there's also um, shifts in consciousness that um, are lasting if, you know when you have a series of these kinds of things um, it's really hard to think of yourself um, in the same way afterwards and to think of other people in the same way and obviously we have these these habits that are just human to I mean I obviously don't think of the universe as one unit all the time I'm not, not always you know, looking at people around me and, and going, oh, that's just another version of my, myself walking around. But, um, you know, it's good to, it, having that point of reference to realize, okay, listen, I'm 
<laughs> what the heck am I doing? You know, if, if you bring yourself back to that, it, it's um, it's impossible to, to maintain that that old perspective. Um, and that took me until I was like 19. So that from 13 to 19 uh, was this really rough adjustment period from um, Christian uh, dogma to uh, to something else. And, and, and in that in between period, it was just like it was chaos. It was I don't know, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. Um, and in some ways, that's good because I got to really understand why th- certain morals exist. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't just because someone told me. It was because I did so many things that were not good. Um, I, I, I started to realize, oh, cause and effect. That's the real morality. That's the real morality. That's the thing that we really need to be paying attention to. You know? And you start to realize, oh, yeah, the basis of all real morality is do unto others as you would have them do unto you or how they want to be done, how they want to be treated. You know, it's, um, it's pretty simple. And when you start realizing that um, what's going on um, and you realizing just how far you know, society is from things, then, you know, there's this period I, I think a lot of us go through where we're just struggling to try to figure out what do we do. And, and that was a really, that was another long period. You know, I, I went from like 19 years old to 27 or 28, something like that, where I was just floundering um, with this perspective of, okay, there's so much going on in the world that's not right. You know, we are so far from the truth. And what am I supposed to do about it? You know, and, you know, I went through a lot of hard years, a lot of depression. Um, fortunately though, you know, my way of dealing with the, those experiences, that difficulty was I just picked up a backpack and traveled. I, um, you know, first I went all over, all over the United States, stayed in a lot of, um, hippie communes and places like that because, you know, I was lost looking, you know, looking for something, looking for an answer. Um, when, then at some point decided to go to Mexico, lived in Mexico for um, about a, almost two years. You know, one of the things that um, anybody who knows me in person quickly realizes is that I have a, a penchant for a debate and for arguing. I'm, it's, it's, I'm incorrigible. It's, it's pretty much constant. If I, if I hear an idea and I don't agree with it, I'm just like, oh, I don't know, I don't think, oh, oh. so something I have to work on, I have to be careful. I have to, rest, to restrain it to some to some degree at this point in my life. Um, it, it definitely was a very positive thing in my development because I argued with so many people. Um, I was exposed to a lot of opinions really deeply. And so incrementally, the people that I argued with changed me. Um, even though I wasn't willing to admit it in the argument, uh, they, you know, for, I got in a lot of arguments with vegetarians, for, for, for instance. I was ex- a militant anti-vegetarian. Um, I was the guy in the room who would say, "You guys are full of shit." You know what are you thinking? You know, but when you're willing to say things like that to somebody, and they then they, you open up the door for someone to come back and say, "Well, this is why. This is why. This is why. And this is why." Um, and in the end, um, that ends up making you realize, "Oh, hmm, maybe they have a point." You know. So in the end, I became a vegetarian as a result. So, um, just kind of you know, it's there's a number of you know really shocking about faces that occurred because of that and i think it's 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 unfortunate that our society is so i don't know about danish society but i know american society is um very hesitant to to jump into these uh controversial subjects the most important subjects are the subjects that people say you're not supposed to have with with strangers you know they're they're the taboos you're not supposed to talk about religion you're not supposed to talk about politics uh, you're not supposed to talk about you know family problems, that kind of stuff. It's the things that we really need to deal with are, are pushed aside because people can't handle it. I mean, it's a large percentage of the population is so emotionally attached to their beliefs that it it unleashes a uh, uh, an emotional explosion when they, when they, those beliefs are challenged. Um, and I've never resonated with that, you know. So it's, I've always been at odds with my surroundings in that sense because not very many people can handle it when a person is just, you know, well, okay, let's talk about this. Let's, let's get into your beliefs. Let's get into why you're saying this is true. Um, and you know, it's, it's, I was one of the most unpopular kids in my school. 
because of this tendency. I mean, I would argue with the teachers right there in class. And so some teachers, some teachers loved it. Some teachers just absolutely despised me and would embar- like attempt to really embarrass me. And the kids um, invariably up until um, the end of junior high, uh, they would just swarm on me and attack me. It was just, I was like the outcast. So it's really, really, really ironic. You know, if somebody had met me when I was in junior high and, you know, this, the, the, the most unpopular kid in school, the kid who got, like, picked on in the halls and hit in the back of the head and all that, um, to see that, that that very tendency that made me so unpopular is the exact tendency that made me um, so big on YouTube.